Uh, thank you guys. It, it was super interesting and I'm sure that we uh, will have a lot of questions to you guys uh, before you leave. Uh, but I do really want to open the floor to, to questions from you. And if you don't have any questions, I have uh, prepared some questions so these guys won't be uh, uh, unemployed. But I really urge you to tackle them on the things that they do. Because if I'm a consumer and I come to assess each one of the technologies, I mean, is it likely that I'm going to buy each one and then get, at the end of the day, pretty much the same assessment? So what are the differentiators? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Good question, yeah. Um, I believe, I mean, everybody here took a different approach about, you know, cyber uh, insurance and the tests they're, they're doing on on, on companies. Um, there is companies like, like my folks here that, that they did, um, they look on a company and their secure posture, you can install things inside in order to understand that or just do an out, I mean, outside in approach. Um, every company looks about their approach and try to, to to have the, the, the best approach for, for them. We at Panerais, um, are not doing a self-assessment kind of approach. We go from the suppliers because that's a process that you already have and you need to assess. And we help you with that process. But companies, and I let them actually say, say their thoughts about that, uh, build products in order to support that and support cyber insurances in their, their approaches as well. Um, I, I'd like to add that um the way the, the approach the checkpoint took is to target a very specific market. We noticed that a lot of tools, uh, there are a lot of technologies uh, for the large enterprises. We heard the process is complex and it's getting, although there it's not where it probably needs to be from a, from a cyber insurance assessment point of view, it's getting there and there are programs and uh, from the government, from the regulators. Uh, we looked at this and we said, we need to, um, to tackle the, or, or uh, have some solutions for the little guy, for those small, small medium businesses. Because Shai taught me that uh, for insurance to really work and actually be uh, good for everybody, you need a really widespread uh, across uh, all types of industries, types of business sizes. So you can't just leave it to the rich. Uh, in a way, it needs to be democratized uh, as much as possible. And this is the approach that we, we took. I think if uh, that just like the insurance itself is uh, is quite different between one insurer to another, um, it mainly depends on uh, on the organization itself. So um, it, it's not a one size fits all. Uh, some some organizations uh, a specific type of assessment would fit. A large organization would probably need more of a, of of a network approach. But the flowers were so nice, <laughs> um, and so on. So, so, so it's not one size fits all, and you need to understand what what it is that you that you are looking to protect, and uh, um, and how uh, if it's uh, risk averse, if it's uh, so, and, um, and and based on that, decide what kind of assessment uh, would fit your organization. Right. I would uh, also say it's not just the assessment technology and how it's carried out, but the application of the result of the assessment. And we're in cover, we're targeting underwriters, we're helping underwriters to make a smart decision. It's not just the output or recommendations um, for the end client, but also helping underwriters um, working with this hyper dynamic threat landscape but helping them with um, using the same words and techniques that are already developed in this uh, area so this is also a very big differentiator between different solutions so I'll complete the round table this is nice, very nicely uh, especially since I'm not a vendor at all um, the interesting ping, piece here is that you have different sets of approach in terms of different types of data that caters to a bit of the same topic and what you see in say for example other markets say uh, uh, estimation of, of risk credit that you have a diversity of actual providers like standards and pools and Moody's and all those guys 
So I'm sure, I'm actually convinced that as this data market matures somehow, there will still be element of diversity because that's required. Like that helps better scan, but also maybe you'll have also aggregation. It's possible that you have then one or two or three big guys that pick up some of the data which is produced here and create big standards of, okay, this is green, orange, red. Thank you, guys. Anita. Uh, how uh, you guys, all of you, uh, actually address the fact that the uh, cybersecurity uh, threat market is so dynamic? And what, what kind of models are you using in order to avoid just relying on historic data and addressing the, the dynamic uh, environment that we are facing? Thank you. Fits exactly my uh, approach. <laughs> That's true. Not yet. Okay. How, how long have you got for the answer? Um, no. So 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 I do believe that uh, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence is the only way today to really cope with uh, the diverse landscape of uh, cyber attacks. So that's putting uh, one side of. Uh, a, of the answer, the the other one is uh, is is obviously people and processes. So putting the right processes in place in order to cope with those kind of risks that uh, that, that that you are able to suddenly detect and cope with, uh, down to how to re remediate them and making sure that they do not reoccur uh, also in in the future. So really looking at. Uh, new types of risks would call into new types of technologies such as uh, machine learning and so on. And I believe that Guy mentioned before that uh, it's important not, not just to look at, uh, uh, at east-west, but, but also looking deeper at historical data, not to predict, but historical data in order to show the full scope of what had actually happened, how something might have started, uh, moved within the organization, started exfiltrating, uh, who within the organization uh, a, a, a specific attack might have actually targeted, and, um, 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 and, and whether they have specific access to PII data or uh, access to other gems of the organization uh, that they would need to, uh, to protect. I think um, I, I like to uh, pose the question back to you, actually. Mm -hmm. And you ask what us as vendors can do, and um, and uh, we explained here that there are a lot of tools developing, self-learning. I can give you all the buzzwords about all of these things, uh, but I think you need to also ask yourself, or all of us need to ask ourselves as a society, how can we deal with this thing? And uh, I, I think uh, the main point here is to, uh, to think about education, um, educating uh, the young generation, because we, are, we need to think not just for the next year or two, I think we need to think for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Um, there are uh, kids today at school right now, hoping that still school, it's not uh, summer break yet. They, we need to think about their education and how we educate them to be cyber capable. Whatever they do, if they become doctors or lawyers or uh, insurers, they need to be aware of, uh, of the different tools that are out there. That, that's, I think, in, in my opinion, the only way to, uh, to have a sustainable um, way to address this kind of, uh, of, of challenge. I uh, would also like to add that I think we should not address this as a prediction problem, but as a classification problem. And uh, using once you look on this in another angle and try to classify the business and which category it stands on the past incidents and attack landscape till now, it will be easier to understand how its, how its security posture will face the future. And it's less than a prediction, I would say, than classification, and that really helps us uh, in cover to get right answers for underwriters. So, um, if there are no, if, yeah. Uh, I have a double fold question. Uh, generally, in insurance, you talk about independent events, and that makes the business working. Now, what we have here, they are not independent, like not Betty or Wannacre. In addition, normally, insurance do exclude more. Now, Nonpetia and WannaCry were events of war as they were state 
Mm -hmm. So those are questions for the insurance, of course. Yeah. So, uh, so cyber policy uh, has no, uh, it has a war exclusion, but only if war is declared. So, not Petia would not be a situation where war was declared. It's a sponsor, state-sponsored attack against from Russia to Ukraine. So, it would be covered under the policy. We also cover terror. So, if it if if it's uh, internet, via internet or, or via other, it's not actually physical terror, then we cover this. So the, the policy is very, uh, it's very, very broad. And um, to your first question, which is an insurance question as well, we look at these issues as if they were one. So initiating for, we look at the proximate cause. If the proximate cause was a malware or was a DDoS attack, we then look at the following things that happened, and then we cover all of them under the same did that answer your question? I have to reflect. Uh, okay. <laughs> I can add just a little bit on that, is that this is station today. But indeed, this systemic situation of, of risk accumulation because of nation state event, that may be something that will have to be catered by nation states themselves, because I could even see that as a way to weaken, say, Western world or reinsurance market and actually create another blow. So first time when we saw with NotPetya was the first time there was a public attribution not to a certain group of people, but to actual state, Russia which to me was a sort of you know, element of escalation, a diplomatic escalation, the way nation state would address that. I wouldn't be surprised that moving forward, nation state, especially in this type of cyber incidents, do take a further role versus uh, insurers. Yeah, definitely we're uh, a, a very, very young product in, in the market and uh, I, I totally agree with you that we haven't seen the hurricanes yes. yet, but when they will come, it will change the whole yeah. industry. Yeah. So looking at the insurance industry, it's been there for 350 years. Uh, cyber insurance, even though we started it in 97, it's still a very, very, very young product that's been sold for the last three years. So I'm sure that we will have a lot of issues around aggregation, around major uh, events happening. Let's take another question. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, okay. It's a question for, for but I'm, I'm going to open this question because I think it's, it's important for, for all of us to, to look at this. And this is part of the hurdles that we are looking, and I, I want to I take your question, and I, I'll answer it in the end, but I want to take your question and, 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 and throw it to you guys because I think that you guys are developing extremely valuable technology for us, for the insurance industry, and that you really are becoming a vital part of this industry. And I want to ask you, what are the, and I'm sure that there are a lot of people sitting here that are only starting and have not raised money yet and are looking at the cyber industry and the insurance industry and saying, okay, I want, I want to go into this industry, but what are the hurdles that you guys encountered over the years with insurance companies, with the industry? I, I really think it would be valuable for everybody to hear from you guys. What are the hurdles and how did you overcome those hurdles? Uh, I will start by um, uh, saying that uh, just a, a matter of statistics, uh, you've, you've mentioned about uh, MSPs, uh, and I don't know if your company offering these services yourselves, but um, in, in a survey that we did for our own small business customers, we noticed that uh, over 86% of them rely on an external source for uh, their IT security. So they have no expertise in-house, and we we mentioned it before, uh, one of the speakers said about acquiring it or paying for it and getting it. Uh, uh, and, I, and I see this happening, and I see this as a trend. Um, that, that's, uh, that's just a comment and, and an observation from, from our own organization. To Shai's point, um, what what the biggest hurdles uh, in my opinion today are the biggest the biggest biggest hurdle is skill set 
within those companies. And you might think about small companies, but I actually like to challenge that approach. And I say that the biggest uh, challenge that I've seen, as I, as I said in my presentation, is skill set within all companies, including the very large ones. I, the number of times that I walked into a, a cybersecurity meeting and I sat down at the table with all the cybersecurity teams, and I've asked them, what's your background? Who, who here actually studied cybersecurity and came from a cybersecurity background? I can tell you that nine times out of ten in the largest organizations, the answer is uh, uh, they came from a networking background that had been thrown into the deep end. And they effectively uh, have no skill set or adequate skill set in security and they're figuring it out as they go along. If you ask me, that is the biggest hurdle. And for us, uh, our approach as Checkpoint would be to, and all vendors I think should, uh, should uh, take that approach, is to simplify the world of security as much as possible. Because if it's simple, people will understand what to do and they'll do the right thing. That is, I think, the key. I think that one of the uh, main challenges are um, ease of testing new solutions and services. Um, and then the ease of deploying them. So uh, while we work with a few um, insurance companies, for them as an enterprise, yes, it was the same issue with lack of people to manage internally systems and so on. When we work with them for their customers, on the other hand, or for their insure, uh, for their customers, um, they then then the fact that we, for example, enable ease of deployment and, and that can happen through MSSP, through MSSP, for example, that by itself was extremely valuable. The fact that they can now start calculating risk without having to deploy anything new on site, any new service and so on, but rather based on existing infrastructure. Uh, so that, that had significantly reduced the hurdle uh, for working with them uh, towards their customers. Uh, working with them for themselves is was was still a challenge because of the large organization, lack of knowledge, lack of expertise, and so on. Uh, I agree 100%. So I would like to ask a question. Um, uh, we we all agree that uh, one of the key issues that we have is understanding what the risk is. But I would like to argue that. Um, same as in cyber insurance, uh, most cybersecurity products are aimed to enterprises. And if small businesses try to buy security, it's either impossible or very, very hard. You need to have a lot of money. You need to have very skilled people to explain to you what to buy. And I want to know what you think about how we make cybersecurity products and services accessible in order to reduce the risk that we find by doing proper risk management. Th thank you for the question. I've been dealing with uh, small, <laughs> yeah, with small businesses for the past five years or so at Checkpoint and. Uh, the first thing, uh, or the first few things that I've did, I've actually thrown out the door everything else that we had, uh, we've been doing. And uh, one of the reasons that I like this field is keeps challenging me uh, and personally, and keeps challenging us as a company to simplify, 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 and make it uh, the same tools, the same, uh, the same technologies that are available for the large organizations. They need to be made available for the smallest of, of businesses, but they need to be affordable. Um, if a small business has $20,000 to spare, they're not going to pay it for cybersecurity. They're going to buy a new machine, they're going to hire a new person, they're going to keep investing in their business. I would have done the same thing if I were them. Um, this is why we've looked at this market and we said if, if we're going to make a true change in, in SMB, uh, we really need to make these products affordable, but offering the same amount of, uh, or the same level of security, not compromising on the security, and, uh, and make it very, very easy, because we need to, they need to make easy decisions, a lot of defaults, a lot of best practices need to be already included in the product. This challenge, as a, as a previous, uh, in my previous role, uh, one of my previous roles, I was a developer, and as a developer, you really like to say, oh, I'm not gonna make any decisions, I'm gonna leave that to the customer, and I let them figure out what uh, boxes to tick. And I think this is a real challenge. We need to think what what I, I would have done if I was in the in the driver's seat for this small business. What decisions I would have made, and make this for them, and make it very easy for them to decide. 
So I couldn't agree more uh, with Aviv about um, how small medium businesses are consuming um, the data and what they can do. I mean, there is, for those businesses, there is no one in charge on cybersecurity sometimes. And when we're doing, um, because we're going for the supply chain, 90% of of the supply chain is actually small medium businesses. Um, we and and what we did in in Panerai is helping. I mean, you talk about simplifying. Uh, so it comes from the UI aspects and from the action items we assign to them. Everything needs to be super simple for them to understand what we're talking about. What is cybersecurity? What are the cyber gaps we're seeing? What they need to do in order to improve. Um, and of course, we have to support a financial model which will help them consume that data. I can also mention that indeed I see a lot of um, large vendors that indeed are going towards that, uh, uh, that direction of, of enabling easier infrastructure for uh, such companies. And, um, and f for those startups here, um, I see today it much easier to work with these large vendors to provide, for example, analytics on top of their data to provide that kind of uh, um, risk assessment for smaller, uh, for small and medium businesses. Kind of a side comment here, but uh, with regards to distributing um, those uh, required simplified offerings for small businesses, I wouldn't be surprised by cloud companies and the very big ones like the Amazon and the Microsoft and will take a huge role going forward. And there's very will be the main platform where some advanced uh, products will have to just fit in to be distributed to the small business companies. One last thing I want to comment uh, um, is regarding small medium businesses is that we see large, large organizations obviously have hundreds, maybe thousands of people dealing with cybersecurity. Small organizations, they don't want to deal with cybersecurity. They don't, they don't have the time, they don't have the knowledge. May it be an architect uh, office, an engineer, a lawyer, an insurance broker, anybody. And all of a sudden we have vendors coming and saying, okay, you have to buy this. How much is going to cost me? 10,000. Okay, and this is, and you find yourself three years ago spending maybe $5,000 on cybersecurity, spending now maybe $50,000 of cyber, and, and when they walk out the door, they say, you ask them, okay, am I secured? No, 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 you're not secure because we have zero day and we have this and we have that. So what, what small businesses are looking, they are looking to outsource the problem, okay? Don't, don't, we, we, we're not interested in technology and your words and your buzzwords and everything. We, we, we will pay you monthly, we will pay you monthly like we pay for TV, like we pay for phone, like we pay for anything. You want to keep our data in the cloud, in your house, in whatever, in the prison. Just take it away from us and let us continue to do our business. And, and that's the approach I think we should be taking, is plug and play. You guys, and that's the, the role of, of building products which are in, in, together. So you have a product, you have insurance, and that's it. Take it away from you. Of course, you're not 100% protected, but at least you have some kind of a feeling and it's, it's affordable. Shai, I would uh, also like to add that you were right about the outsource uh, approach. Small businesses like to outsource everything. They are using cloud services more than ever before. And also security vendors and insurers need to take that into account. When now applying a security solution to a small medium business, you must take into account that a lot of the services in the organizations in the organization are you are uh, provided by cloud providers and also as an insurer you also need to address that how this can expose you because if you have a huge book of small medium businesses as a matter of fact in the end you have a small book of uh, a lot of cloud providers. Mm -hmm. And this is also something which is right. very important to the insurance industry. We'll take last question and uh, um, we're on. We can? Okay. Hi. Um, what about end users, people like us in our home? To what extent we're vulnerable? To what extent we're threat to our employers? Or is the industry going uh, in that direction protecting them? What about the insurance industry? Are we going to see household insurance for cyber threats? I'll just say from the insurance perspective and then you guys, uh, you know, we're, we're dealing with the major problems and then we'll, we're, we're 
probably will move on to the uh, smaller problems as we approach. I understand that keeping, that my grandmother keeping all her grandchildren's <coughs> photos on her computer is very important to her, but when we look at the industry, it's not in the industry's big interest to, to with few minor things she can deal with it. What we are doing for the private lines, for the household and stuff, we're looking more at uh, high net worth individuals and we're trying to give them products that will be uh, built into the uh, home insurance so they will have some kind of uh, um, brand protection or they'll have some kind of uh, data reconstruction money or forensic and stuff like that but it's really a very very uh, the market is still not there I can tell you it's uh, we've seen some experiences Chubb came out with a policy AIG has a policy that uh, goes all the way to the uh, private lines but it's, it's not a big market you guys want to add something just a couple of points um so you said there uh, rightfully, what does it mean to my employer? Because we have to remember that even when I go home, even when I travel, even when I'm on vacation, I'm personally still a Checkpoint employee. I have business data on my phone. I might have uh, access to business data from my home computer. And that makes me a, a target, not just as an individual, but also for, uh, for my employer. And if you think about it, not just from my employer, I also, uh, um, you know, as, an, as a company we work, we, we have uh, partners, we have suppliers, we have customers, so I, I potentially can risk them as well. So because in this today's world everything is connected and every individual is not an island, okay, it's, uh, you, you are connected with your business relationship, personal relationships to a lot of other people and that makes you a, a, a target. Uh, one of the things that um, we've, we've done at Checkpoint, we started looking into home security, smart homes specifically, and uh, IoT, uh, a buzzword that has been thrown out here, but I'll just give you an anecdotal point that uh, we've actually worked with the LG and we figured out that they had a vulnerability in their vacuum. So smart vacuums that some of you might have at home. Uh, we actually uh, proved that we can remotely control that and turn on the camera and you can, we can drive the thing in your house and actually film everything that's going on. That was pretty much uh, uh, a crazy thing. And if you have a smart TV and you're enjoying or not enjoying the 4K transmissions for, uh, for the uh, FIFA World Cup, then you know that your TV is connected. It's, your home is already connected, even if you don't realize it. You have a lot of things already in your home that are connecting you and you are a target. So, um, we look at this as a yet another vector, another type of, uh, as an industry, as another type of uh, uh, market, if you will, that we need to address and secure, and um, that becoming more and more of a priority for us as well. I can give you uh, by last the way, comment, please. Sure. Uh, I can give you an example. We have a customer uh, with 150,000 employees worldwide. Uh, they do deploy a bring your own device uh, methodology, so that so people that are. Uh, regularly might be under attack uh, at their homes would then bring those devices to work so th this is a real concern for that specific organization um, while I'm not involved with that organization on, on, on the cyber insurance I can tell you that they are deploying different technology uh, um, uh, solutions that would monitor uh, those specific devices whether they are at home or at work um, and uh, we basically provide them the visibility of everything that happens on their network, whether that network is from home uh, or in a specific office out of the hundreds of different offices they have worldwide. So uh, organizations are taking that into consideration, and I'm sure that on the, uh, on the insurance side as well. Okay, so we've come to the conclusion. I want to thank you guys for your insights and, and for coming here and, and taking your time to, to present your uh, products, and I'm sure that we will be in touch all of us here with you in the uh, in the future. I want to thank Anita and Ram and Nitsan for for organizing this great event and uh, taking. I know it's you're traveling a lot, all of you, and uh, we were in contact in the last few weeks, and it's taken a lot of your time. So well done, and thank you very much, and thank you everyone for attending, and we hope to see you here next year. <laughs>